Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now in this video, some of you remember a little while ago, I bought some really cool carnivorous plant seeds. And what I'm gonna be doing today is, we're gonna be, well we're gonna be start, it's gonna have to be two videos, so it's gonna be a start of a process. I'm gonna show you how to use gibberellic acid to break dormancy in what I would describe as tricky seeds. So those seeds that would uh, either have a particularly hard shell to them, um, a protective shell, all those seeds which perhaps rely on bushfires um, to get them to um, to germinate. So some of these species, some of these species will be things like Saracenia. Uh, a large number of them rely on sort of bushfires and stuff to come over, um, and then basically that will promote the, um, the the seeds to germinate. Um, and another good example. Uh, we, we, specifically for what we're going to use is certain types of Drosera, so in this case uh, Ambiblis as well, and we're going to be using it on some Biblis Gigantia seeds. So what I'll do is I'll get everything together uh, and I'll have a quick talk about what the product we're using is and basically how we're going to uh, mix it all up. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so here are the things that you're going to need to do this. Um, this is specifically for um, in this instance, um, carnivorous plant seeds, although I'm pretty much sure you could use it on any sort of seed, even old seeds. I think it's supposed to be good at breaking dormancy of, uh, of old seeds as well. So I've got a couple of sheets of um, whatever this stuff is. It eludes me at the moment. Kitchen roll. Uh, a very small amount of rubbing alcohol. We're only gonna be using a fractional amount of this. Some of your carnivorous plant seeds. Um, this is a vial of gibberellic acid in powder form, so we're going to be diluting this. And I've got some of these microwavable proof little Tupperware pots, um, which is what we're going to be suspending the carnivorous plant seeds in. Now, gibberellic acid is basically uh, a naturally occurring substance. It, it basically is produced in small amounts, from what I understand, uh, in plants. And it's basically um, can, it, it basically controls growth rate. Um, it was discovered um, growing on, I, I have read up a little bit on it, but only very briefly. It was discovered basically affecting uh, the growth of rice plants um, there, and it comes from um, a fungus, or it's produced in greater volumes by a fungus called gibberellia something or other. Anyway, this fungus was, um, they found it to be attacking stored rice, um, which they would so, and they found that some of the plants would grow extremely fast, so fast that eventually they'd fall over. Uh, and they, they looked into it and they found out that it's this gibberellic acid which is causing, um, is, is having effect on these plants. So, what they, they, then they can now synthesize it so they can grow the fungus and make it that way. Um, they basically like a giant brewing process. Um, they, we, we have then refined it and now you can use it to stimulate plant growth. They do spray all sorts of crops and all sorts of stuff with it, um, which I don't know whether that's good or bad. My instinct is with this sort of thing that it's probably bad. Um, but on the flip side of that, it is very useful for stimulating growth in seeds which would otherwise require some form of funky um, sort of intervention by human hands. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be dissolving this up to make a solution uh, and then we're going to be suspending these um, seeds that I've got. They're bought from Trifford Nurseries. Great advertising for those guys. Uh, we're going to soak them for 24 hours uh, and then we're going to sterilise some media and we're going to sew these guys up tomorrow. So yeah, this is going to be quite good fun. I'm looking forward to this little project. Okay, so gibberellic acid, as far as I'm aware, is not listed as a poison. You can get it off of places like eBay and Amazon, which is where I've got this from. Now this came with a handy little sheet on the directions of how to use it, specifically aimed at those of us who are actually uh, going to be working with um, carnivorous plant seeds. Um, it actually says here, although GA, that's the abbreviated GA3, is not listed as a poison, the following precautions should be observed. Flush with water, blah, 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 don't drink it, don't get it in the eye. Um, but what's handy about this is it gives us the the the, um, the dissolve uh, or the solution strengths that we need to make up per 
uh, as per the amount that we've got and per what the use we're going to be using it for. So you would use a weaker um, solution for things of just, just like tricky seeds. Uh, and we're going to be using a quite a concentrated solution. So we're going to be looking at something in the region of about uh, 500 parts per million in order to get these um, these seeds are given the best chance of germinating. So uh, it's given us this bit of information. It actually says seeds of Bivlis gigantea and Rorigula dentat. A stronger solution will be needed. Uh, this will then make up 200 milliliters of solution. So basically this needs to be dissolved into 200 milliliters of, and I'm using, this is what this water is over here. I've actually got some um, reverse osmosis water in here because that's basically laboratory grade. Uh, good stuff. So we're going to be using that. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of drops of the rubbing alcohol inside this vial to get the actual gibberellic acid to dissolve. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to submerge, um, basically submerge, fill this with it, well, put a couple of drops of the um, rubbing alcohol inside this. And then I'm just simply going to pour it into this solution here and give it a stir with a spoon. Uh, and then that, once divvied up, should be, I'm just going to wander over here and get a spoon out the cupboard. So I lied, you're going to need a spoon as well, that's going to really, really help. Um, make our stock solution, then we're going to transfer some of that stock solution into here. And we're going to place the two different types of seeds, clearly marked, into these containers. Due to the volume of stuff I'm actually using here, I think it's going to be easier to approach this in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pot here, and into that I'm going to empty the vial of gibberellic acid powder. So I'm just going to literally pour that inside of there like that. Okay, once all the uh, GA or gibberellic acid is uh, transferred into this little pot here. I hope you can see that in the bottom there. We're just going to add a few drops of isopropanol, rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to drop that in there. Oh, a few drops means loads if you're at Oliver's Greenhouse. And all we're going to do is just stir that up just to get it to dissolve and become a solution. Oh, do that where you can see it. So we're just going to give that a good stir. Just to get it to dissolve like this. Okay. The next step is going to be decanting this. I could work around the camera so you guys can see this. Into the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce the two together. Simply like that. Pop this out of the way. This is going to get a bit of a clean up before we use it anyway. Both the pots will. Give this a final stir. And that is our GA3 mixed up. Right. We'll leave that there for now. And um, we'll lay the seeds out which is the next step we're going to be doing. Okay, so here's our couple of pieces of um, kitchen roll we're going to be using. And uh, this is basically going to allow us to soak up the GA3 onto the seed surface and they're not going to float around on the surface, which is going to be really, really irritating otherwise. Now the first one we're going to be, first seeds we're going to be taking out are going to be uh, Drosera bromensis, Taylor's Lagoon, Kimberley. So we're going to be using these, are a, a, a sort of a, a type of paradox um, um, carnivorous plant um, closely related to Drosa paradoxica and I don't I have no idea what the seeds look like so we're going to just simply pop them into there they're typically unbelievably tiny so they're going to be uh, relatively difficult to I assume even get out of this at some point. So that's going to be a bit of an adventure. 
What I'm going to do is just fold these guys up like this and like this until we make a little parcel up like that and then we're just going to poke a little triangle in there like that and that's going to go in this one here and what we should do is mark the actual tub so I'm just going to mark this with a D dot B Joshua Bromensis, that way I won't forget. Stick into one side over there. So these are the Biblis Gigantia seeds. No idea what these are going to look like. I'd imagine they're going to be somewhat larger. I'll open them carefully and I'll hold them up to the... Uh, that's what they look like. There's just three seeds in there. Tiny little things they are. There we go. And the same thing again with this. Fold them into a little parcel. Cut them down in there like that. And he can go inside the other pot, which I've rinsed out and I was using earlier. Okay, like that. Now all we've got to do is apply some of the GA3. the pots very carefully without spilling it all over my nice work surfaces like that there we go there we go and they can go in the fridge so these guys are going to have to soak for 24 hours so I'll be dealing with these tomorrow once they've had a good soaking in here and what's going to happen is the moisture is going to absorb through the shell of the seed and the gibberellic acid is going to get in there as well, and that's going to stimulate the reactions we're going to require for germination to start off. So they can go in the fridge, but it's nice and cool. In fact, I'm, will I put them in the fridge? It might not be a very good idea. Maybe best to leave them at room temperature. So I'll put them out of the way somewhere they're not going to get knocked over, and uh, we'll see how we get on. I'll tune in for 20, in the next 24 hours, and we'll sew these bad boys up. Thanks for watching.